Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast, Dragon Ball edition. And boy, do we have a Dragon Ball podcast for you all this evening. Today, we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 84 titled The People's Pride. We're going to be tackling the Bardock Thrive translation controversy. Going to be talking about some little superhero and then go from there. So we have our Dragon Ball expert with us, Mr. Mitch Oso. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, we're about to find out. I'll tell you that much. We're about to find out. (laughs) And that is a perfect segue, Mitch. Why don't you just take it away and let's hop right into Super Chapter 84. Chapter 84 of People's Pride is the name of the chapter. Translation uh, by Caleb Cook. Never mentioned that uh, before. But I'm doing it today. There you go. All right. So starts off here. Uh, the previous chapter ended with the flashback of the audio log of Bardock and Gas and how that all panned out. And now we are back to Goku and Vegeta, Granola and Monado um, in his hut and um, Oatmeal, the little um, assistant of Granola that we've never actually seen indicate that the audio log has ended and Goku and Vegeta and Nato are just kind of in shock at what they listened to and um, Nato said that once Bardock was healed he left and then he left a scouter and then Goku starts having flashbacks of whenever he was a child that he is um, seemingly forgot um, he sees Bardock return to the planet um, Vegeta all beaten up while he's in the um, you know the incubator um, doing this thing and then he sees you know his mom and he sees um just everything just you know as a child then um a flashback also shows the moment in which bardock um says that they have to get goku off planet so they do they see that flashback that was shown in um the burly movie and whatnot and we see goku you know flying off to earth And Goku makes a remark that um, he finally understands what Saiyan Pride is about, um, or rather he remembers what it's about along with his uh, dad's face, and um, that he realizes that he hasn't had total faith in his own power. Um, And that goes back to him doubting his, you know, ultra instinct as uh, he kept, you know, talking to Whis about it a couple chapters ago. And... Vegeta says that he has lost sight of um, Sam Pride as well, and that it's not his burden to carry all the sins of the Sands, but it's his um, burden to keep or, you know, carry the people's pride verbiage. So, and um, Goku shows, or Vegeta shows a little disgust that it had to be um, Bardock who made him realize this. And I'm going to read this word by word from this panel on chapter or on page six and Vegeta looks over at Goku and says, and to think that you and Raditz survived when you were young because of a wish on the dragon balls. That's not fair. Goku says, give or no, that's not fair is what Vegeta says. And Goku says, give me a break. And, you know, they go back and forth. Vegeta says that wishing for you to thrive and all, who ever heard of such pampered Saiyans? And then Goku makes a joke about um, how he pampers his daughter, Bra. And Vegeta claims that that has nothing to do with it. And Monado just humbly just, you know, in, just says, uh, you know, Bardock, what a funny way for you to, uh, for your will to be passed down. And that a people's pride isn't about atoning for sins of the past. And it's not about taking revenge which then the panel looks over at Granola since he's been seeking revenge his whole life. And um, he says, it's all about your nature and sticking to your convictions. And uh, that's, that's true for any tribe out there. So, and um, Monado says that he's going to patch him up before Gas gets back. And um, he, um, he gives them um, sand armor to wear, just kind of conjures it up out of nowhere. And then, you know, Goku and Vegeta, just they request back their their regular old clothes, right? So, and um, we see now we're in outer space 
and we see gas, you know, flying through outer space. And then um, he senses where Goku and Vegeta are. He's apparently close enough um, to sense them. Uh, instant transmissions to the planet. And in a, in a sweet superhero kind of landing thing, he slams into the ground right in front of the hut. Goku and Vegeta have been healed, it appears. And, and gas is outside the hut. He tells them to come on out. And um, oil, um, remember, oil is the big, the big, uh, the physically bigger brother of um, gas and all them. Um, again, he was, he's in the woods kind of watching out. He radios in saying that gas is back and he's at the hut. And uh, Mackie says, or she was kind of in shock that he's back um, sooner than they expected. And Alec, um, Alec's there and he says, let's move the ship over to their direction, but only within view of the battle and not to get close. Again, he knows it's dangerous. And Oil walks up to Gas, asks him how he's feeling. And Gas, kind of embarrassed, he says, um, he's wasted too much time. Tell Alec that he'll be finished shortly. And Oil flies off saying that they'll have a tasty meal waiting for him whenever he's done. And so that little fun part is over. Um, but now the panels get really serious and really actually kind of cool starting from this point on. Um, you'll you'll find out that this is the uh, there's a sort of a tipping point as to my thoughts on this chapter. But we see that um, Goku and Vegeta are coming out of the shadows of the hut. Um, pretty, pretty sweet, kind of reminiscent of like when they came out of the uh, hyperbolic time chamber and whatnot. And um, and they come out, and Gas says that he thought they would have ran by now, and Goku says that it, no, it's time for you and your gang to leave. And Gas says um, that they'll leave once Goku and Vegeta are dead, and Vegeta makes a remark that um, that he wants to defeat. Gas, even if it kills him, and Goku says, "I'm not going to let you have all the fun." And Vegeta makes a remark. He says, "Fine, we'll fight together then." Little, little different than normal Vegeta, but okay. And they start powering up. You know, just friendly back and forth between Goku and Vegeta. That you know, they're who's going to be the one that takes down Gas? And then out of nowhere, they just explode into their ultimate transformations. At this point, Goku is. Um, MUI and Vegeta is Ultra Ego and pretty good um, illustration here showing both Goku and Vegeta and you know their power ups and uh, Gas is slightly shocked and um, but nothing not overly shocked per se and um, we go back up to the ship in which you know the other heaters are at right now and uh, Mackie, she's asking what those forms are because she's never seen them. Oil makes some some jokes in how he describes them um, to her. Um, he says that uh, Goper, Go, Gopers, I'm combining words here, that Goku's transformation is super duper instinct. And Vegeta's is called massive ego boost. Just kind of funny how um, they're just poking fun at it. Cool. Um, uh, Mackie says she doesn't care about the name. She just wants to know if they're strong. And Oil um, claims that they are really strong. And and so on and so forth. And Gas asks Goku and Vegeta if they're going to fight together. And he's, he tells them that they are mindless as ever. Saiyans in general. Um, you still fail to comprehend that such a strategy will not matter, given the gulf between us. And Goku says that, you know, He's not the one that understands, and uh, this has nothing to do with our odds of victory. What drives us now is the sheer desire to win. That's that's what they learned from Bardock. Just fight in in front of you know impossible odds per se. And then we see them the fighting. The fighting starts. Goku and Vegeta um, dash toward Gas. Gas prepares, and Goku throws a punch, and Vegeta throws a kick. And we get another double panel um, page shot on pages 18 and 19. Goku and Vegeta attacking Gas and Gas blocks each one. Really cool artwork here. Can't, can't uh, deny that. 
And um, Gas says, yeah, that's about what I expected. And they just keep going back and forth and whatnot. And Gas is dodging all of their stuff and not really laying down or getting hit by anything just yet. And um, Vegeta's trying to, you know, really smash into him. And Goku is just, you know, on the on the offensive. And um, again, no one at this moment can um, really lay a good hit on Gas. But you can see that Gas is kind of struggling to keep up with both of them. Um, Vegeta throws a punch. He intercepts it and, and then punches Vegeta right, in, right into his forehead, launches him to the ground. And then he's able to kick Goku. Now, remember, Goku's MUI right now. This is not Omen. This is this is MUI. And um, he's able to kick Goku, send them both to the ground. But right when they hit the ground, they just they get up instantly and they just start sprinting towards gas. And gas is just in shock and he's trying to dodge all their punches and kicks having for the most part pretty good success and then as um the two are dashing towards him he just blasts them with a humongous key blast but uh both goku and vegeta dodge it by flying up in the air and goku uses a command man vegeta uses a gallic gun right above gas and they just um they just you know blast them and um, my page here is not loading. Martin, if you have the pages starting at 34. Yep, no, no problem. So pages 34, we're talking about when, because you were talking about Goku and Vegeta basically shooting like that super, I, I saw the internet was calling it the divine Gallic Kamehameha. I don't know if that's going to be the official name or whatnot of that, but gas gets out of the way, then gets a, I don't even know what type of weapon that is, an, a mace? No, oh, I think, okay, I, th I think I might, okay, nope, I'm lying. Okay, it's fine, but gas gets his weapon out, and then he comes from behind, he's swinging. Goku, of course, MUI dodges, but Vegeta gets blasted in the back of the head, just like you talked about, Gas hits the kick to Goku's gut, pins him to the ground. And then we've, how many times have you heard this line from Vegeta before? One, he's talking about the move. Uh, this is a God of Destruction move, one capable of erasing near mortals. And of course, a Vegeta line. If you're truly the strongest, then try standing up to this. If you've watched Vegeta for 30 plus years, how many times has he told an opponent to stand there and take his attack to prove that they're the strongest? Yep. It, it is it's a reoccurring thing, this time with a basically a god of destruction death ball. Mm -hmm. But Gas turns around. He said, observe as I deflect your worthless move. So then he's blocking it with his shield. Goku does instant transmission, gets behind Vegeta. I can't tell from the pages if Goku puts any energy to the Hakai death ball or he's just helping Vegeta push it. But Gas is sitting there just blocking it. And his crew is talking about how Gas is losing ground to them. And then Mr. Alex asking if, hey, did they use his transformations before? And then I was like, oh, yeah, they used it during Granola. Then he's like, oh, it's cool. It's fine. The Wish made him the strongest after that. So he could, and they're like, oh, he could still win this. They're just like, relax, reassured that Gas is going to win. He's the strongest in the universe. Just watch. They're still pushing. Gas is pushing this ball back. Goku's like, he's pushing back. We're losing ground. Vegeta leaves Goku with the ball to contend by himself, and he goes charging at Gas. He gets a blasted in the gut and he gets his head grabbed too. And he goes flying. And then Gas is like, What's wrong, Sand? Losing too much blood. You still think you can win? Vegeta's like, Why wouldn't I? And then Gas is basically like, All right, save it for the afterlife. Goku's still having to deal with this Hakai ball with a city behind him. And this was impressive too that he was able to finally throw the ball out of harm's way and then goku's like vegeta and then he transports right behind vegeta but then vegeta hits a smooth i think this was their first connected hit really it's a smooth punch to gas in the face 
sends him flying. Gas is like, you worm, what trick is this? Vegeta wipes the blood off his face. And he's like, damage, damage is nothing, but it fuels me now. You realize what that means? I'm only getting stronger. And that is how we end manga chapter 84. And then it's looking like it just says to be continued. It actually did not give a, a date. A date. So um. So we'll just assume that, you know, it's June 20th. They've done this before. And then, you know, we ponder if they're going to take a break or anything like that. But it seems as though that uh, we'll just assume June uh, 20th will be the next chapter. But, you know, so that's the chapter. So let's start diving in. Ugh. Okay. Okay. All right. So so for the listeners, I mean, we, we, we try... We try to, you know, not necessarily, we try to be original with our ideas here. So, I mean, but it is very sometimes hard to, um, you know, not echo what maybe some people are already saying out there. But it's like, sometimes you have to wonder, like, do does Toriyama, does Toritaro, does, you know, Viz, do, do, they, do they understand what has been established in the past. I know you can't get, you know, everything, um, you know, the thing about stuff that's being canon, it's hard to actually keep stuff, you know, linear progression over the course of, you know, in this case, it's decades. It really is 40 years of storytelling here. So, so we get that, but like some of the most like either, basic things that have been established are ignored or the consequences of them not thinking about what they're about to put out and what it means for stuff in the past. So let's, let's get started that one. So Martin, where do you want to start? Should we just start page one where, you know, we can go back to our, our um, potential issues that people have had when, you know, the retcon of, you know, Goku's childhood and that he actually remembers his parents. Um, he, you know, he was kicked off planet in a suit of sand armor, but in Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> I saw that. But, yeah. Um, so my first thing with page one, which I'm already going to first see this maybe for the future. This is the last one, uh, piece of his dad left this scouter, and I feel like Goku's just not even going to bring it back to Earth when this is all over. That's actually going to kind of piss me off since it's been a big uh, factor in this. So I'm already going to throw it out there before anyone else. Somehow Goku's not going to—he's going to forget to even bring this scouter, or this is never going to be brought up again. So throwing that out, man. I don't know because I really liked—I really still like the Goku. Bardock, the father of Goku movie slash special, like mm-hmm. how he was, and then he got the future powers from killing that guy, then he saw all those things, and so then he was trying to change his life and repenting and knowing that his son was going to be the one who beat Frieza. So I still like that. This one is like, I don't get why they're trying to, I mean, it's more, I mean, it's humanized him a lot more. It really made Bardock seem like he was not that bad of a guy at all and i'm not saying he he was a normal sand previously but now they're making him like he was way different than everyone else he was living a whole different life like a normal family life like he came yeah he came back beat up and the first thing he does when he talks to his wife is go to goku's pod and then goku's remembering all this stuff and even like the other pictures where where Goku's mom, if you see the picture of Bardock's leaving, it's actually interesting in that. Yeah, he doesn't have his tail back yet. She's holding Radix's hand. Yep. So it's like, we know what a piece of crap Radix was. Yep. So it's like, for those people who are like, oh, if Radix comes back, they're going to humanize him, which I think that'd be stupid. But it's it's crazy. Then he starts remembering his mom, like, working hard and falling asleep, and then his dad, and then them sending the ship off but it, i do find it interesting that in this chapter in this chapter 
They do show that when Bardock arrives back at the planet, he does not have his tail. And then they show he grows his tail back. I mean, this is not this is not even just the same chapter. This is the next page. Yeah. Which is so so he had, he had his tail in the movie, but that was the yeah. movie part. Well, that's the thing. It, they 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 are aware. They are aware when they when when they were drawing this about this that mm-hmm. his tail was plucked. And that they needed to have the tail back. So they are aware of that. Now, you know, Toriyama has stated on the record that he he grew tired of, like, drawing tails, right? But we've never had an in-universe explanation as to, you know, how tails work. Because Goku got his plucked by Kami, and it never came back. So was that like a surgery you know, Gohan's didn't come back. Uh, Trunks and Goten were never shown. Um, but then we thought, you know, adults can't grow their tail back. But, but then, you know, then we can get in the GT or whatnot. But, like, Bardock has his tail grow back. And, like, ooh, okay, this makes no sense. But, yeah, we've, we've never had an in, in-universe reason for, for any explanation of the tails. And that can just be kind of annoying sometimes. Like, we shouldn't have to dig through interviews and magazines from at wherever just to read what they were thinking. You know what I mean? It's just, and that's going to come up here in, in the second as we just progress here. What, were you going to add something before we get into Vegeta, well, Goku's realization and Vegeta's rant? No, I was just, it's kind of crazy how he's just like, he remembers this and it's going to go to the next stuff about the pride stuff, but that in Goku's vision in the anime, he saw Vegeta, Vegeta's dad and Bardock, which is, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Goku says, I, I feel like I finally understand what Sam pride is about. Mm, No, you must've forgot it. You know, when you're first fighting Frieza, like, as you said, and you know, he's just, they just they just forget what they what they were stating there. Vegeta though kind of catches me off guard a little bit because he has been just ever since the beginning of that Moro arc, he has felt like he has needed to, you know, be the the savior of all of the sins of the Saiyans, you know. And it kind of just it was sweet, but it was kind of just came out of nowhere whenever he saved those Namekian kids from Moro and said that uh, he already did harm to um, he already did harm to that their race. He, you know, he's going to protect them this go around. I mean, that was great character development. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess you can, you, can, you can say that his character development made him forget about the previous things of his character. And they're trying to circle back around to it. But like Vegeta's entire life was about sand pride. Yep. He has spent probably 95% of his life all about sand pride. And then all of a sudden he just forgets it and forgets about it. And it just it doesn't it doesn't seem correctly. And then, you know, um uh Minato says that, you know, um there's all this stuff. A people's pride isn't about atoning for sins of the past, it's not about taking revenge. Is about accepting your nature and um, sticking to your convictions. And that's true for any tribe out there. So it's, I wasn't, I wasn't really convinced that Vegeta lost his conviction of, you know, being prideful of the Saiyans. Yeah. So, I mean, I think they're stretching that. But I mean, I like what Vegeta was doing, being a little more compassionate for all the people that him and his race is killed but i never really saw anything that was like you know trying to erase his pride for the sands you know if if someone was talking about the sands and like vegeta was trying to you know not talk about them because he was like you know embarrassed by what they did in the past you know maybe that would have built up some more character development with there with regarding him losing his conviction but we never saw that but, but the big part, the big part that we're going to now talk about is 
is Viz's translation, Caleb Cook's translation of the word thrive. So what consequences? Um, now, again, I don't think this is the issue as much because of translations. I think in Japan, I think their meaning is a little more different than what we are here taking this in the States um, or in English, I should say. But Vegeta literally looks at Goku and says that you survived when you were children because of a wish of Dragon Balls. Now, maybe Vegeta is implying that um, the wish was just to save them or, you know, it, it just where did the wish effect end? You know, did it end when it got Goku and Raditz off planet? Did it last until they were adults? Did it last until they fought each other and killed each other? Um, is Goku's wish still affecting him now? Um, it's there, Since there's no definition of when the end of this wish like is, we, we run into some issues because if this wish, let, let's, say, let's say it was kids, based off of the verbiage that Vegeta says, um, when um, that him and Raditz survived when they were young. All right. So let's take when Goku was a kid. That would mean then that everything that Goku did to survive was all based off of a wish from a Dragon Ball. So whenever he, whenever he fought, you know, any of those, you know, dinosaurs. Uh, whenever he was living by himself after Grandpa Gohan died, whenever it was, you know, meeting Bulma or Yamcha, fighting Pilaf, Piccolo, the Red Ribbon Army, you know, all of his motives to even train. Like, was that really Goku? Like, was that really Goku that was like, like, um, like getting pushed to do that? Or was the threats that was about to, like, you know, those threats that he was about to meet, were those just consequences of that wish? You know what I mean? Yeah, so with the translation and Herms, Herms 98 really broke it down. He was, like, breaking down Vegeta's wish, the original Japanese translation, like, before uh, Viz got a hold of it, is for the kids to grow up healthy and well so since they grew up that's why vegeta was like they had to make it to adults adulthood so that's why they survived the planet destroying and then we had to call them spoiled and all of that so if people didn't see herms of stuff they saw the thriving thing and the reason this has caused so much of an issue is because the people who don't know anything about dragon ball like cbr and screen rant these are two articles right now on both things. Dragon, this is screen rants. Talk about clip. Dragon Ball Super's huge wish invalidates Goku's entire story. Yep. That was posted May 2nd. Before, yep. or this is CBR. Dragon Ball Super's mangas might have just ruined the entire franchise. Yep. This was April 26th. And these people obviously don't know who Herms 98 is, or they're not checking like their stuff because they're seeing the thriving thing. And Dude, this is cause for, for, for anybody who doesn't know who Herms98 is, go get yourself a Twitter account. Don't be a bot. Don't fight Elon Musk. Okay. <laughs> and go follow Herms98 along with some other Dragon Ball followers. Herms98, he is like the epitome of translations. Like he he does all of the translations for all of this stuff coming over from Japan. Like there's some other people. Who, who can do some translations, but he is like, he is like a pro. It is like, I think English has to be his second language. He, he gets details down and he has always been a reliable factor for unreal geekdom, us, um, everybody. You go, if you need a translation, you look to see what Herms is saying. And uh, yeah, that's, yeah. So like what Martin was saying, Herms was tr- I'm um, trying to explain the wish from the original Japanese manga, whereas, you know, we're we're just doing this in English. And, you know, there's other translations 
all in different languages. So English is only one of the many out there. So I guess you got to take it for, do you take the one that in English as the one that's your canon or do you take the one that's uh, one that's, um, you know, in Japanese in canon directly from the, you know, the hands of the writers and all that stuff. And um, yeah, it just, but the thing is, is that Viz knew and Caleb Cook, they knew that there was this huge backlash over the word thrive from when Bardock made the wish in the last month's chapter. And in this chapter, they have doubled down on it. Because Vegeta says that word wishing for you to thrive and all. Like, like they are they they are sticking to their guns on the English version of it. So Yeah, so it's gonna be real interesting. I and I hate saying this line because I saw this line a lot because of this chapter. When this gets animated, what stations, what Funimation is gonna how they're gonna do it, how Toei is gonna translate that because there's going to be some people who do that as a definitive thing and just if you go on google while you're listening to the l7c dragon ball podcast right now just go on google and type in bardock wish by then the top things might be different but right now it's all about fans are divided breakdown of bardock's wish did this ruin the series you go on youtube like and the videos down bardock wish kills goku the problem with bardock wish for goku says Bardock's wish explained part one, and like we obviously waited till our schedule, like Dragon Ball Super podcast, because Bardock's wish in general could be a whole podcast in itself. But I interpret it like to make it to adulthood, because obviously they weren't thriving. Because as soon as they saw each other, they both died. So, well, the one thing that, and and I'm stretching this, uh, viewer listeners, I know I'm stretching this. But if this, if if Vegeta is correct and that this wish was only for them, like when they were young, like I guess you could try to draw a line as to when you go from young to adult, and it would have to be, I mean, Raditz came to Earth after you know Gohan was born, so like Goku went from being, you know, a teenager, twenty year old to a parent, so you could. You can kind of view like when you become a parent, you you can kind of and, and again bear with me. You can kind of say that you're an adult. You know, what I mean, you're not young anymore. You, you're taking care of young. Now you might not be mature. You might not be. You might have some child tendencies, but at that point, you're you know it's buck up and grow up. When when you go from there, so if if that's the case, then. You know, Raditz is the big brother, for example. So I guess you know, Raditz didn't have kids that we that we know of, that we know of. they could always add that shit later. But like, um, yeah, I, I guess that's where potentially the wish could kind of fade away, or I don't know. But again, I am probably stretching that like Laffy Taffy. It's probably some some viewers probably might be like, "Cool, oh, okay, I get you, I get you." I, I guess I'm trying to make a reason for something that like I'm trying to give an excuse for an unexcusable. I don't know. Yeah. I, Cause we don't want to spend too much time on the rest of time, but it's just like, obviously, but now the flip side with my argument, cause I said it ends at adults, but people are like Radix coming and doing what he did is the best thing that happened for the Dragon Ball franchise. Because obviously then Vegeta happens, then the trainings, then they both have kids and like so it was all so now it's one of those things like where i don't believe it but now people are going to be like bardock is the true main character of the series like he's the overarching thing of the series yep but yep, yep. and um yeah i'm with you yeah once raditz came everything skyrocketed power levels i mean frieza was I've said it before, Frieza was the reason why power levels got stupid. But power levels started to skyrocket when Raditz came. Because right whenever they knew that Vegeta and Nappa were coming, everybody was training. Goku had to go to other world to get on par with Vegeta. And then 
and then because of you know the fight then with um Vegeta, like ooh, like we saw this um this one review this 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 guy stated that um you know Goku fighting Vegeta then was the best thing that happened to him because he didn't go to Namek at the same time as Gohan and Krillin. Um and if he did, he he might not have been or no, he would not have been able to train like what he did. You think Bulma's going to be able to survive a hundred times Earth's gravity? No, she would squish like a pancake dead. So Goku would not have gotten that training. Goku would have got smoked by the Ginyu Force, and that arc would uh, you know this this show's over. You know this lights out. But let's move on from that. Uh, obviously, we talked about then we already talked about Vegeta making. Um, well, before we get into the fight, because I th- I think we've gone over everything. Yeah. Um, in terms of that, um, now before we get into what I deem to be the good parts of this chapter here, with no controversies, Monado, I don't understand how Monado healed Goku and Vegeta so fast, because Monado has stated in this arc, and I'm paraphrasing, that he is garbage at healing, that he takes forever to heal. He's just not good at it. All right. Um, Now, Goku and Vegeta are, you know, they're still standing. They're not knocked unconscious, you know, messed up like what Granola is. But they're, 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 they were beaten up pretty, pretty well. And gas is, it only took gas, what, 20 minutes to get back after Goku arrived back. So, like, before this fight, Minato has to heal. Goku and Vegeta, and they look like they're perfectly fine. Heck, they got different, out, different. The, the, their attire is perfect. No, their clothes are perfect. So it's like, um, with with Monado being able to heal quickly, even though he's not good at healing, he has to heal their God Key, and we have established that healing God Key takes longer than normal, and that was done. Or that was said by Dende during the Moro arc after Moro stomped everybody. And you remember Goku got his chest pierced, like hit the right side of his chest. Uh, Granola or um, Moro just, just stabbed Goku right through his body. And granted, that is a way more severe injury than what Goku and Vegeta are saying. But, but Dende was able to heal him. And Dende's a. You know, he's like a perfect healer. Like, he, he's got a master. He's got a lock. He's been healing people um, since he was a child. And he even said, God key takes takes a while. So they healed Goku first. So then he could go beat Moro, which he did. And, but now here we are. Monado is healing two Saiyans that both use God energy in under 20 minutes. I'm like. So, and then I actually. Now with that actually does add a little controversy to the fight part because they were able to go to their ultimate forms. Last time Goku was fighting Gas, he could only get to Super Saiyan Blue. And just talking about how bad the healing was when Dende healed Goku back in Moro, Goku was significantly weaker. He can only do Ultra only. He can only do Ultra Instinct Omen. Like, that was his max, like, control until Mirus died and all that. Now you're healing a Goku who could go into MUI, and that shitty healing, as you said, was able to get him from blue to MUI. That is, that's impossible. You know, as I said at the beginning of this, of this podcast, I get that sometimes 40 years of stuff is hard to, you know, be consistent. It, it, it is. But we're talking about Monado admitted that his healing was garbage maybe two or three, four chapters ago. Like in 2022, he has said that his healing is garbage. The moral arc, when Dende said that, God healing was a thing that was last year or that was the end of 2020 like we are not far away and that is the problem with these chapters coming out once a month it is like like they need to stop do all this crap look it over 
instead of just creating it, you know, as the days go on here. And it proofread their shit. Holy, oh my God. Ugh, drive me nuts. Yeah, so that that's one thing I'm just like, I, because they, now I would have been, I would have been acceptable if they would have went to Super Sam Blue Kaoken times 20 in uh, Super Sam Blue Evolution. But for them to go to their max forms after just being on Death's door with a bad healer, that, that doesn't make any sense. Nope. But, nope. all right, but let's get into... Okay, let's get into the cool stuff. All right, so this, this, this entire review is not all hot garbage. But anyways, so the panels of Goku and Vegeta transforming are sweet. Mm-hmm. Seeing them side by side contrasting, it is sweet. I, I I mean I'm impressed with the artwork for this. I'm not. I think Torotaro draws a pretty good, draws a pretty good chapter. Yeah, and we're gonna keep pushing through, not worried about the people talking, and also like obviously the different forms. Hell, even the different way they both went to attack. Goku went for a punch. Vegeta went for a kick, and like when we're going through this fight, and I was talking to you about it before we. Before we even recorded, anyone, and, and you are, I'll give you credit, you are a big Jiren fan, mm-hmm. but th- this proves gases oh, yeah. on a whole, this dude was fighting M-U-I and U-E oh. at the same time. Yeah, th- there's no, there's no more debate anymore as to, you know, who's the strongest between, you know, Jiren and um Moro, yeah, gonna, Broly, because everyone's yeah. like, oh, they're gonna get Broly to come help. Mm-mm. No, Not no, a feat. Hundred percent Broly. Um, well, Jiren would get stomped. Broly would get stomped. I'm trying to make some connections into heroes, but yeah, Broly would get stomped. And I'm trying to think if Moro would get stomped. Well, well, Moro couldn't even be. Here's the thing, too. Moro was getting smoked. And he would have died if, uh, well, it's always Vegeta, but if Vegeta would have killed him before he ate 7 3. Yeah. And then Goku, when he went MUI, remember that MUI is significantly weaker than this MUI. Goku would have killed him by himself before, like the, the reverse, all that stuff, if he didn't absorb like the small stuff from Mirrors. Now, we can maybe make a debate if Moro would have got six months to train with Mirrors' powers. Then that's a discussion. Maybe Goku beat Moro just because of little Oob's powers. You know, the donation from Oob. Maybe that's stronger than what we originally thought. That is pure sarcasm. Just before this joke actually becomes viral. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I would I would have to say gas post wish is stronger than Moro, but yeah, the yeah it's, yeah it's it's official now because the fact that we didn't think we would see MUI and UE fighting side by it. side against gas like this the fact that they're doing this and like Vegeta said all right he's like fine. Let's do this together. It was like one of those things where to just uh, go back to the MCU where like they're asking how we're going to do this. And Iron Man's like, like the old man said together and they're starting to fight together. But there was no objection. They just powered up and fought together. You think it's okay. I am fine with people being able to dodge Goku's attacks as MUI. But do you think it's bullshit that he can ever get punched? Or kicked. I think you have to be like significantly stronger. I don't even know stronger, but you have to be M- I guess significantly stronger, more you like have to be faster than his body's instincts. It's like like Weiss would whoop his ass, obviously. Yeah. Like an eight, like one of those angels would, or I mean, now I was at a point where I don't we don't know what Jiren's doing. I don't know if I don't know if Jiren Red's cutting it anymore against MUI Goku. Jiren better freaking know UI. They're like, he, be- he better uh, next. Anyways, side note. Yeah. But like, 
is MUI just a it's just another transformation. That's all it is with white well, hair. We've talked about it getting to this point. I mean, when Granola first knocked Goku out, we were like, oh, that is not good for MUI. Nope. It's just and, and like what you said, you know, there's eventually whether it be this arc or next arc. Oh, or, it's coming. It's so coming. It's coming. You know, MUI two, Super Saiyan MUI two, or well, no, that's what that's what's coming. And, you know, they said when Granola was first fighting Goku that uh, they mix, uh, you know, MUI with Super Saiyan Blue. Yep, and they mix so it with I Super mean, Saiyan God too. They're already showing the principles there. It is coming. Yep. Yep. So that that's that was your you know shout out prediction all that time ago and that's that's all MUI is it's just it's just Super Saiyan transformations again just the, we're, we are recycling this the only thing that makes us fine is is that Vegeta has been diverted and has his own transformations yeah let's say there's you know Ultra Ego two or whatever it is but I don't even think here's my problem with Ultra Ego. Because it's standing like side by side with MUI. I always, I was the one saying that I thought it was more like Vegeta's in the Omen state. Like, so is there a mastered Ultra Ego? No. Because I feel like, I mean, I don't think you can always get get hit and then like, because obviously when Granola started hitting him, you take so much damage, you're not getting stronger. You're just getting put to the ground if someone's that much stronger than you. But Mitch, with that power up scene, which it was a very fire picture do not think that should have been the picture they leaked but whatever they know what they're doing because it gets people talking about it It made me go crazy but the other thing is back on the table now that the fandom's bringing up and i know we don't like using it all that often but it's back it's fusion we are here now it could be back on the table i don't i don't want a fusion i don't want a fusion um i almost start to wonder if we're due for a fusion but i mean from in terms of manga we haven't seen fusion in five arcs, five arcs, four arcs. I don't know. I'm just saying because they powered up next to each other. They're fighting him together. He's still technically winning. So the Phantom's like, dude, if it keeps going like this, if Goku doesn't get MUI two or what I think's going to, I mean, I think that is going to happen or Granola wakes up and fights with them. But then it's like, is really gas the character we want to waste MUI, Ultra Ego, Gogeta on? Is that who we want to waste it on? No, not on gas. You want to know who you want to waste it on. Um, you want to use it on Alec. You want Alec to he be... He still has a plan. Yep. And that's and, and there's two things with this, is that there, there is an avenue for fusion to happen in this arc, and this is what it is. So if, if Alec's ominous warning here comes true, then gas is about to get really freaking strong, really freaking quick after Vegeta. Vegeta is about to get stomped again, and Goku might get stomped again because next chapter we're going to see if Vegeta get the upper hand, and something's going to happen, and gas is going to get the upper hand on these guys, right? So that's just how it's just panning out. It, it's it's a you know it's a WWE match. You know, someone has the upper hand, and then it, you know the the pendulum swings back and forth until, you know, the finale, the, you know, bring it home, whatever. And, and um, shout out to Jacob and uh, L7C for wrestling podcast. Tune into that too next time. So the avenue that I can see fusion happen, I don't think it's going to happen, but this is how it could happen is that they're going to fight gas. Gas is going to win. But right now off, off screen, Monado has to be healing granola. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And if he's not, he's the shittiest character ever. And Granola Straight should up. be close to full strength. Granola should be at 100% strength if Monado um, could heal God Key, Goku, and Vegeta in 10 minutes. So, um, so yeah, then that would be Granola. Granola would be the one then to distract Gas enough for that fusion. That would be, you know, Granola would take the role of Pycon, or he would take the role of Frieza, or, you know, and just be the, the crash test dummy until the fusion is done. And then that would be how we get. 
But I, yeah, when I saw them powering up next to each other, it gets to, I'm like, oh, this is getting very dangerous to fusing. And I don't think that should be the thing. Alex still out there. Granola, I think Granola is going to come. And it might be, it might be one of those things where like Goku, you're the one who can do it. And it's like, or they're going to say something stupid where Bart, where uh, Vegeta and Granola are just like, hey, Goku, Kakarot, your dad was the one who beat him 40 years ago. It's time for you to finish what your dad started. We'll give you the rest of our energy. And then something happens and he remembers his dad. And then they remember survive. Because I said a couple of weeks ago, it's like the stuff was called Granola, like the survivor arc. I felt like it was never implied now that Granola was a survivor. Now it's Goku. Because remember yeah. what Bardock and them said, they're like, survive. So I was just like, okay, it's about Granola, comma, and a survivor. And it's looking like that survivor is Goku, not him. Yeah. Okay. But what do you think is going to happen next chapter? Because obviously the fight's going to continue. And for them not to give us a date is still interesting. Um, next chapter, it'll start off. Vegeta will be, um, you know, Vegeta will get this upper hand. He, I mean, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if next chapter we see gas bleed, you know, just like a tiny smidge of blood from his mouth, that kind of fight. And, you know, and then um, we're going to see then, you know, um, probably the same stuff that happened against Granola. You know, Vegeta's going to take so much damage that he just can't keep going. Yes. You know? And then Goku's going to try to fight, and Goku, I don't think Goku's going to win it by himself. I think Granola's going to have to come, and maybe Granola and Goku fight together. I mean, I don't think so. It's like, you just can't break the mold of Super. I mean, it's always Goku and Vegeta. Goku, you know, he 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 fights a little bit vegeta fights a little bit they fight together for a little bit and then ultimately it's just goku finish it off finish it off granola's just another you know he's just an added peg on this wheel and i just can't i can't see them breaking the mold cuz they just don't it, it's the same old mold if that makes sense but i i do think though by the end of the chapter we'll we'll see gas starting to turn up the heat so Fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, just some quick things since we are pushing that hour mark. Goku Day happened earlier in May, and we got some news about Dragon Ball Super. Superhero is going to be in the States around August. Uh, North America currently scheduled for August 2022. Um, from a strategic standpoint, in america mitch i think that's actually a great month to do it because if you skip july and obviously july is going to be thor love and thunder uh mcu movie so you get out of that and you start off august and there'll be no one taking you on by then you said june correct uh the movie will be well in america will be out in august in japan it'll be june yeah so yeah august is good um, for the states, because like what you said, the, the winding down of four. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember any big releases coming out in August. Now, August is a weird month. I don't think too many movies come out in, in, in August, but like any big names like that. I was going to say June, though. Um, June will be big here in the states. Or eh, I'm trying to think what it does internationally, because, you know, you got Jurassic World coming out on June 12th. So, and this movie comes out June 11th in Japan. Yeah, so um, now over in Japan, this Dragon Ball movie is going to do perfectly fine. Absolutely fine. No, now will Jurassic World probably take a hit? Maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think I would suspect that if you looked at the box office numbers for that weekend, Dragon Ball should beat, beat out Jurassic Park. Or Jurassic World in the box office, but everywhere else, obviously, um, Jurassic World would would put uh, Dragon Ball, you know, and blow them out of the water. And, you know, that's actually a good question. What would do better in Japan? It would have to be Dragon Ball, correct? I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. I love dinosaurs. Um, 
for for anyone that doesn't know me. But for me to say that, I bet I bet some people would kind of raise their eyebrows, even think that I would even say that. But would you would you think that? Would you think that Dragon Ball Super Superhero would outdo Jurassic World at the box office? And we're talking about a movie, the past two movies that have made over a billion dollars. One of them almost made two billion. That is actually a very one point six, but very good question because obviously like the Jurassic fans, but I would say Dragon Ball has a shot just because the way that the anime movies have been really killing it in theaters. Obviously, it, like Dragon Ball Super Broly was one of the ones, the My Hero Academia ones. Demon Slayer Mugen Train was the one that took it to a whole other level. That movie was the number one movie in the world. That movie made half a billion dollars as an anime movie. Like, so that's changed everything. It was the number one movie, like, again, in the world with a budget of. 15.75 million and then box office made 505 million. So here here's something. So I just I just googled this. Um the question was how much money did the Broly movie make in Japan? Mm-hmm. Um I assume this is just in theaters. But as of February 3rd of 2019, the film sold 35 Point four million dollars at the box office. So thirty four or thirty five point four. Um, now the last Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, uh, Dominion or not Dominion, Fallen Kingdom, box office Japan. I guess that's the one thing too that. Um, I didn't look was to see if it actually came out in Japan on the same day as Dragon Ball because they could have pushed it out, you know, a week, and not had a a synchronized um, universal release, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Jurassic World um, by the end made seventy four million, so more than twice of what Dragon Ball did. So, yeah. but I don't know, you know, what uh, what the weekend was. So. Maybe Jurassic, uh, maybe Jurassic World would, uh, you know, overtake Dragon Ball on opening weekend. But we'll see. I don't know. I just don't put it past Japan. We'll see. We'll see how these movies are doing. And just going back to Demon Slayer, it was the highest grossing movie in 2020. 505. And that's on the planet, not just in Japan. And these anime movies are getting better and better. Obviously, they're getting more publicity because the animation is just getting better and better. People are oh. in there. Uh, so. I did Google this, this topic kind of just for fun, but uh, Japan gets Jurassic uh, World July 29th. Okay, so it's going to be out and it'll be out. So so Dragon Ball will have its weekends completely free. Yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be good. That's good for them. They're going to pull in a lot of money. So we'll see how that does. And then just another quick hit thing, Xenoverse 2 still going on, Ultra Instinct Omen and Dispo coming to the game. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sounds exciting. Waiting for Xenoverse 3. I'm like, what more are they going to put into Xenoverse 2? They could do more. Of, they could do the whole arc now. It's well, out in the that's, manga. Well, that's the thing is that are, are, are they going to draw a line? Are they going to be like, okay, we're not putting Moro in because we need Moro to be in the third game so that we can actually entice people to buy it? That's true. That's true. We'll see, man. Um, it's it's gonna be interesting. Anything else, Mitch? Nope. Nope. That's it for me. I mean, uh, I'm spent. I'm tired. Yeah, I think Exhausting. the only I think the only thing I want to add about the Sam Pride stuff because people were complaining, and I mean, if you go on YouTube, you can literally type in "Vegeta motivates Goku," and you can find if you watch Dragon Ball Z at the beginning, you can find the video where. Vegeta is talking about the pride of their people and Goku is understanding it when he's fighting against Frieza. So you have that part just throwing that, throwing it out there because people are complaining. And it's come to a point too where it's like they don't care about their own past. And then when they get called out on it, the creators just was like, well, I'm, I'm the creator. I could do what I want. But yeah. it's, it's the fans who keep the continuity 
the continuity all going, but shoot, this was a pretty, I don't want to say controversial, but definitely a thought provoking Dragon Ball thing about Bardock's wish because mainstream media is getting a hold of that. And now and then the people, the casuals saying, Oh no, Goku's only strong because Bardock's wish. And yeah, so I hate saying the line. When it's animated, we'll see what he says, because Lord knows it's 2022 and there's no animation news in sight. No. Yep, yep. But with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. Signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.